We are also hunting those that are of symbolic value, including all those that have been declared wanted. I will speak more about this later on in the brief. Now, we relentlessly target these categories of terrorists such that we will be able to strike them out and take them off the battlefield as soon as possible. For us, the fate of such terrorists is decided. It will be violent and it will be shot. And we will stop at nothing to take them out of the battlefield. Accordingly, during the week under review, troops neutralized 227 terrorists and arrested 529 of them. Troops also arrested 11 perpetrators of oil tax and rescued 253 kidnapped hostages during the week. In the South-South, troops denied the oil theft of the estimated sum of over 1 billion naira during the week. Furthermore, troops recovered over 230 assorted weapons and over 6,400 assorted ammunition during the week. The breakdown of the weapons recovered and ammunition is as follows. We recovered 89 AK-47 rifles, 40 locally fabricated guns, and 59 10 guns, among others. As for the ammunition recovered, we recovered over 4,000 rounds of 762 millimeter special ammunition, over 80, 840 rounds of 7.62 millimeter NATO ammunition, as well as over 80 rounds of 5.56 millimeter ammunition, among others. Troops in the Niger Delta area discovered and destroyed eight, 18 dugout pits. They also destroyed 34 boats and they recovered over 1.4 million liters of stolen crude oil during the week, as well as over 150 liters of illegally refined AGO. Now, a look at our various operations across the country, beginning with the Northeast, where we have Operation Harenkai. The troops of Operation Harenkai recorded the following activities during the period on the review. The troops recorded additional surrender of terrorists and their family members, and these surrenders took place in Mafa and Bama local government areas of Bono State, as well as Gujba local government area of Yobe State. The troops of Operation Hadenkei also conducted offensive operations at locations such as Damwa, Mafa, Dikwa, Goza, Kukawa, and Bama local government areas of Bono State, as well as Madagali local government area of Adamawa State. 
Furthermore, the troops of Operation Harden K arrested terrorist collaborators and informants in Kukawa, Bama, Dambua, and Mopa local government areas, all in Bono State, as well as in Unisari and Gaidam local government areas of Yobe State. Furthermore, the troops of Operation Hadinke rescued, kidnapped hostages in Goza local government area of Bono State. Additionally, the troops conducted fighting patrols and recovered ammunition and weapons in Magumeri, Dambua, Mafa, Dikwa, and Konduga local government areas, all in Bono State. Overall, the troops of Operation Hadinke neutralized 83 terrorists during the week, arrested 59 suspects, and rescued 58 kidnapped hostages during the week. The troops also recovered 62 AK-47 rifles in the course of their operation during the week. They recovered 24 fabricated rifles, as well as over 950 rounds of 7.62 mm special ammunition, among others, during the week under review. Now, we can move on to the North Central, where we have Operation Safe Heaven. The troops of Operation Safe Heaven recorded the following during the week on the review. The troops arrested violent extremists in Barkin Ladi and Basa, local government areas of Plateau State, as well as Janua, local government area of Kaduna State. Troops also rescued kidnapped hostages in Shendam local government area of Plateau State. Overall, the troops of Operation Safe Heaven in the course of the week neutralized 10 violent extremists, arrested 31 of them, and rescued 24 kidnapped hostages during the week under review. Now to Operation Wild Stroke, which is still in the North Central. The troops of Operation Wild Stroke recorded the following during the week under review. The troops conducted offensive operations in Takum and Wamba local government areas of Taraba and Nasarawa states, as well as Agatu and Chikung local government areas of Benue and Kaduna states. Furthermore, troops arrested violent extremists in the course of the week. They arrested kidnappers. They arrested gun runners in Nasarawa and Kaina local government areas of Nasarawa state as well as Yoru and Makodi local government areas of Taraba and Benue states. Overall, the troops of Operation Wild Stroke neutralized 17 terrorists. They arrested 123 violent extremists and rescued 18 kidnapped hostages during the week, among others. We can now cross over to the northwest where we have Operation Hadarin Daji. The troops of Operation Hadarin Daji recorded the following during the period under review. Significantly, on the 12th of May, troops of Operation Hadarin Daji 
encountered two separate ambushes, namely at Kuran Motor Village as well as along road Alikere Yamalami Village in Zamfara State. Now, though troops fought through the ambush very fiercely to extricate themselves from the situation, sadly, we recorded casualties of four soldiers killed in action, while three were wounded in action in the first ambush. In the second ambush, five soldiers sustained minor injuries of gunshot wounds, and the soldiers were stabilized, having moved to Ford Operational Base Faskari for medical care. Now, during the ambush, troops received support from the air component of Operation Hadam Indaji, as well as reinforcement from forward operational base here Malawi. The joint efforts of the ground force and the air force dealt severe blow on the coalition of terrorists that gathered in numerical, numerical strength to execute the ambush. Accordingly, several of the terrorists were neutralized as they suffered heavy casualties. Now, the coalition of terrorists is a new tactic being employed by the terrorists, and we have unlocked the change in tactics. And we have made necessary adjustments to maintain tactical superiority in the battlefield. Overall, the troops of Operation Hadar Indaji neutralized 58 terrorists, arrested 125 of them, and rescued 105 kidnapped hostages during the week. The troops of Operation Hadar Indaji also recovered 29 AK-47 rifles, 15 fabricated weapons, among other items recovered. Now to Operation Wild Punch. The troops of Operation Wild Punch recorded the following during the week on the review. The troops conducted fighting patrols in Kachia local government area of Kaduna State and rescued kidnapped hostages in the same local government area of the state. Additionally, the troops of Operation Wild Punch conducted offensive operations in Giwa local government area of Kaduna State, as well as in Adavi local government area of Kogi State. Overall, the troops of Operation Wild Punch neutralized 25 terrorists during the week. They also arrested 97 suspects and rescued 32 kidnapped hostages during the week. The troops also recovered 6 AK-47 rifles, 188 rounds of 7.62 meter special ammunition, among other items recovered during the week. Now to the South-South, where we have Operation Delta Safe. The troops of Operation Delta Safe maintained momentum against the activities of crude oil theft. The, the troops of Operation Delta Safe destroyed several illegal refining sites and recovered stolen products. The troops destroyed illegal refining sites. They also arrested violent extremists. 
or militants in Udupani local government area of Cross River State. Troops also conducted fighting patrols in Ovia South West local government area of Edo State. Additionally, the troops of Operation Delta Save raided violent extremist hideouts in Brass local government area of Bayelsa State, as well as Ethiopia East and Sapele local government areas of Delta State. Overall, the troops of Operation Delta State recovered over 1.4 million liters of stolen crude oil during the week and over 150,000 50, liters of illegally refined AGO, otherwise known as diesel, during the week. The troops of Operation Delta Safe also discovered and destroyed 18 dugout pits, 34 boats, and 97 storage tanks during the week. Other items recovered include 198 cooking ovens destroyed, 57 illegal refining sites destroyed, among other activities carried out. The troops of Operation Delta say during the week also neutralized three violent extremists and apprehended 16 persons involved in oil thefts and violent extremist activities. Now to the southeast where we have Operation Udoka. The troops of Operation Udoka recorded the following during the week under review. The troops conducted fighting patrols to also local government area of Imo State. They also arrested violent extremists, occultists, in Upper Buyo, local government area of Cross River State. Overall, the troops of Operation Udoka neutralized 21 terrorists during the week. They arrested 45 of them and rescued 12 kidnapped hostages, among others, during the week. Now, all the recovered items, arrested suspects and rescued hostages were handed over to relevant authorities for further action, including prosecution. Now, to summarize, I will say that troops are fighting army bravely in a very challenging, complex combat environment and have made significant progress. However, I must say that there is still a lot of work ahead as there are still many more terrorists to be killed, many weapons to be recovered or destroyed and many terrorist commanders and leaders to be taken off the battlefield. Having said all that, it would be fair to say a word about the just concluded visit of the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and his wife, Lady Miga. We are indeed honored to receive the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to Nigeria. We applaud them in their mission of bringing awareness to those in need, especially for highlighting the issues of veterans and the need to address 
the challenges that face soldiers long after they have left the military. It is our duty to remain diligent and faithful to those who have and are serving our great nation. We thank Duke of Sussex for the continuing for continuing to shed light on these matters and bringing them to the fore. Being a veteran himself, the Duke of Sussex speaks not only from a place of compassion, but from hard-end experience. It remains our duty to continue serving these men and women who sacrifice so much for our country. Now going back to ongoing operations, I will say that on the ground, troops continue to demonstrate stamina, they demonstrate resolve, and they demonstrate a strong desire to remain focused and stay the course until the enduring defeat of the terrorists and their cohorts. Accordingly, we are bent on diminishing the ability of the terrorists to conduct acts of terror or harm on citizens. Now related to my brief earlier, we are on the hunt of one Halilu Buzu. This Halilu Buzu is a leader, is a terrorist leader that hails from Buzu in the Republic of Niger. He settled in Sububu Forest, which is somewhere around Zamfara, as well as lives in Shinkafi local government area of Zamfara State. He has a camp for illegal gold mining located at Kawaii in Anka local government area of Zamfara State, and he also has a lot of boys working for him. Additionally, he is a prominent cattle rustler. Last week, his boys killed 19 villagers at Farah Kasa. And for us, he is a high value target. Therefore, we declare him wanted. Furthermore, he is a major arms dealer, supplier, trusted by arms dealers, supplying arms from Libya. We have been on his trail, and whenever we close in on him, he bolts across the border into the Republic of Niger for refuge. At this time, we are through appropriate channels calling on the Nigerian authorities, regional authorities, and international bodies to support us in effecting his arrest and holding him accountable for his atrocities. As mentioned, be it cases of intimidation, extortion is unacceptable. What I advise you do is you write to us. You write to us. All you need to do is give us the location. If you can get names, fantastic. Give us the location and watch and see whether or not we will take action. I tell you for free, there was an incident that was 
on social media by one popular blogger. A popular, I don't know if he's a blogger or just a popular person. And it had to do with a checking a checkpoint. As soon as we got that, we took action. Go and check that checkpoint today. It has been sanitized. Immediately we saw it, we took action. So once we get this information, we take action. We don't tolerate it. Now, for the issue of the Tudumbiri incident of 3rd of December last year, I already mentioned that it is before court martial. It is still before court martial. And it will be adjudged as prejudicial for me to speak on it. When it is sorted out completely, you can be assured that I will be here to give you updates about it. But once you observe something happening within your environment, you don't understand it, you let us know. And then we come in. What you observe, you keep quiet. Until something happens and then you make us to react. No, no, no. That's not the way it should be done. On the issue of this Halilu Buzu, how are we getting to know about him? He's a, he's a cattle wrestler. He's, a, he's an illegal uh, gold miner. He's involved in uh, uh, arms. You can see all this very dastardly art. He has a gold mine where he's mining gold illegally. We cut the information and we moved in on him. And what have we done now? We have declared him wanted. And I assure you, he's the first of many if Nigerians and citizens will rise up to the occasion. Tell us and check and see whether we'll act. Tell us. I know some communities are even entering pact with the terrorists. Say, don't touch us, we'll not touch you. Don't touch us, we'll not report you. Come on. What nonsense is that? It's like you are, you are saying that the devil can be kind. Can the devil ever? The devil does not have it in him to be kind. So don't even Im imagine that you are expecting kindness from him. A terrorist is a terrorist. So what I will say about that, once again, is if you see something, if you know something, you say something. And I always say that more people know things than people that see. So it is those who know I encourage to say because they know. Tell us. Tell us. So I will stop at that. Thank you.